Amen. Um, how many of you are enjoying your 21 days of fasting and praying? Amen. You could kind of sense it, sense the atmosphere and the expectation of what happens when you fast and you pray. And, and uh, some, of, some of you are, your stomach's growling. <laughs> but your first three days are just, let me just kind of, your first three days are your hardest. And every, everything after that gets a little easy and stuff like that. But I want to also remind you that um, this Saturday is our uh, prayer service. It's only an hour. It's time of communion. Great time to come, 9 to 10. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really cool. We do a little bit of worship, and then we, um, I, I'll share something. And then you can come up and take communion at any time. You could, so many spouses come up together and kneel at the altars and pray together. And you can walk around and pray, whatever. But it's just a great, great, great um, opportunity to come and pray as a church, and uh, I just really believe that that's something God's really speaking to us about is being that church of prayer, and uh, I'm so excited. Also, too, in just a few weeks is Super Bowl Sunday, and it's Jersey Sunday here at Destiny, and um, so, you know, uh, this coming Sunday, we're going to have um, uh, some, a lot of advertisements you can give out. What a great day to invite a friend. People are like, really? You guys are going to, like, you can go to church? Yeah, you could do that. It would be great. So it would be fantastic. And then also, if you haven't been doing your devotional, our devotional, really, that we've been going through is called Less of Me and More of Him. And, um, and so it's been very, very, very good. So go online, find it, do it, and uh, go through it, and it's going to be fantastic. Well, I'm excited today about the Word. And are you excited about the Word today? Amen. All right. Come on. Let's stand to our feet. Let's give our online audience a big, big, big round of applause right now. God bless you. Thank you for watching. My Bible. Um, our theme this year is, is um, free indeed. And, and uh, just really felt that on Wednesdays, I, um, as I have, um, uh, I, as I mentioned, um, I have two life groups. And in one of my life groups, um, I always pray, well, both of them always pray over the, the men in, in my group, and, and oftentimes it's a personal prayer as well. But um, this whole theme of what I'm doing on Wednesdays came from a prayer. And it's one of those prayers that I pray every day over my life, and that is that God would give me the vision like Nehemiah. He'd give me the wisdom of Solomon. He'd give me the favor of Joseph. He'd give me the compassion of of Jeremiah. He would give me prophetic insight like Isaiah. He would give me boldness like Joshua. He'd give me leadership like Moses. I mean, I, I pray that prayer over my life every day. And when I was done, one of the guys looked at me because I had prayed it over another guy. And one of the guys looked at me and goes, why didn't you pray that over my life? <laughs> so I thought, do you guys want me to teach on this? And they're like, yes, we would love for you to teach on that. And uh, so I'm so I'm, doing, I'm getting ready to do that. And so you're a little ahead of, of them. And so last week we talked on having vision like Nehemiah. And today we're going to talk about what it's like to have favor like Joseph. Okay. And so you're never going to be the same because the favor of God's about to hit you tonight. Amen. It's going to be great. Genesis chapter 50 verse 20. One of the best scriptures to me in, in, in the Bible. Um, and that is Genesis chapter 50 verse 20. It says, but as for you, speaking, Joseph speaking to his brothers, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for the good. In order to bring about, watch this, as it is this day to save many people alive. Now, I want you to see this for a moment because we're going to dive into it and then it will all make sense at the end. We often quote this scripture like, you meant evil for, towards me, but God turned it around for the good. And we stop there. Okay, I want you to see the meaning of the turnaround. And the meaning of the turnaround, put the scripture back up, is this. To save many people alive. So, so bad, bad that happens to you is never the conclusion. It is just the process. And so you're not going through something to go through something. You're going through something to be a rescue to somebody else who eventually is going to go through it. Okay, so, so we're going to break that premise down right now. It's going to be good. Father, we thank you for the spirit of revelation. Give our minds illumination that we would experience transformation. 
God, I pray you give us a mind to perceive, a heart to receive all that you have. And I ask that after this message, we'll never be the same. In Jesus' name, and all God's people say, amen. amen. You may be seated. If you don't have a message outline, our ushers would be more than happy to get you one. We're on, on Wednesdays, we're, as, I've been, as I mentioned, we're in this character tour. And last week I talked about having vision like Nehemiah. And I encourage you to go back and watch that if you weren't here. And today I want to talk to you about having favor like Joseph. What does it mean to have that kind of favor? And the question is, is who is Joseph? Joseph was the um, son of Jacob and Rachel, actually the 11th son. He was favored and chosen as a vessel of God. He was a dreamer. He was an interpreter of dreams. And he was a steward of God's dreams. And so majority of you here are dreamers. You have a dream. And God has given you your dream. And when God gave this dream to to Joseph, he was 17 years old. Now, having that dream at 17, that you're going to be second in charge of all of Egypt, that I'm going to make you great in the eyes of, of, of Pharaoh, and, and people are going to bow to you. And, and, and Joseph, at 17, ran to his brothers and told them his dream. Now, at 17, you quite don't know who you are. You're still trying to figure out life. And all of a sudden, it's like getting your first car. You go around and show all your friends And you just think you're all that in a bag of chips. So part of Joseph's attitude is what got him thrown into the pit. He didn't go to his brothers and go, guys, man, I'm so humbled that God gave me this dream. No, he went to his brothers. He was like, yo, God gave me this dream and all you guys are going to bow down to it. And you'll see over the years of why Joseph went through what he went through. And in those 13 years span, he didn't go through anything because God was mad at him. He went through everything because in order for him to stay at that place, there were some things in his life that God had to chip away. One of the things we have to learn is that getting there is not hard. Staying there is hard. Success, people can achieve. But staying successful, many people land up falling. In ministry, the question today is not how anointed you are. It's how long will you last. And so, and so, so, God allows us to go through things, to chip away things in our life that will allow us to last at that place that God has given us that dream. Now, the enemy's goal is the fact that he doesn't care if you get there. But what he would love to do is that when you get there, you lose it all. For instance... If I was standing, if I'm, as I'm standing on this stage, the height isn't that, that high. So if I fail off the stage, I'm not, not, not really going to get hurt. But if I got on top of the roof and I fell off the, the roof, I probably would die. God, the enemy, doesn't mind you succeeding. He just wants to make sure you have dysfunction when you get to the top. Because when you do, if you fall, it's going to be impossible to get yourself back up. And so this is why he allows people to succeed even in the midst of dysfunction. Because he could have knocked them down at the height of this stage. But if he knocks them down at the height of the stage, it's only going to give them some scratches. And then they're going to get back up and try to achieve again. But if he can get them to the top of the mountain. And so this is why... He took Jesus to the top of the mountain. Because at the end of the day, he was like, well, if you, if you fall, the angels will just come and rescue you. 
Well, he didn't tell him that when he was on the bottom of the mountain. Because the enemy doesn't mind you succeeding. He just wants to make sure you're dysfunctional when you get to your destination. So for God is, no, I'm going to take you through a process. And sometimes that process on the peripheral does not equal to what God told you internally, inside of you. And the confusion and the tension we live in is, God, you showed me this. But where I'm at, it doesn't look like that. And so what God does is that he takes you through a process. Process isn't punishment. Process brings things out of your life to prune you so that when you get there, you actually last. And so, so God took Joseph, and Joseph was a, a Hebrew boy. And the dream that God gave him was that you would be second in charge in Egypt. It's almost impossible to think, to believe that. Literally, God, I'm, I'm, an, I'm an Israelite. I'm an Israelite. I'm a, I'm a Jewish boy. The Egyptians don't like us, and you're going to make me second in charge. And when God gives you a dream, oftentimes it doesn't make sense. It, 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 you cannot logically put it together, and here's why. When you know it's a God dream, logically you can't put it together. And the reason why is because if you can, then you will make it happen on your own. And all God wants is the glory. He'll give you the story, but he wants the glory. And so, so God, God allows him to be thrown into a pit. And he's thrown into the pit, and all of a sudden, the, the Ishmaelites come by, and, 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 and the brothers sell him. And the next thing you know, they sell him to, to, the, to the Egyptians. And he ends up in Potiphar's house. And I, I want you to notice something because there's something that's threaded together through the whole thing. And the Bible says this. The Bible says in Genesis 39, and the Lord was with Joseph. And I want you to circle that in your outline. Because the word the Lord was with Joseph actually means and his favor was on him. Now, listen to me. God's favor is not conditional. It is not conditional in the aspect of where you are presently at. Because you can be in the wrong place and the favor of God is still on you. Now, the Bible says, and the Lord was with Joseph so that he, he prospered. And he lived in the house of the Egyptian master. And when his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord gave him a success in everything he did, notice... He was in another man's household. He was in an Egyptian household who was somewhat different than him. He was an Israelite. Potiphar was an Egyptian. You are a believer, and the world is sinners. And notice that the sinner saw something on the believer. And so when people look at you sometimes and you are, and they finally meet you and after a while, it could be a customer, a client, whatever it is, and then they'll go, you know, there's just something about you that I like. What they are seeing is the favor of God that's on your life. And so, and so the favor that's on your life cannot even be denied by the people who are in the world. Because at the end of the day, they look at you and they go, how did you... Everything you, t everything you do, oh, you have all this stuff going for you, and they can't deny it because the Lord is with you. And, and look what it says. And it says, and Joseph found favor in the eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household and entrusted him to his care and everything he owned. And notice what God did. God allowed him to go from the pit to Potiphar's place. Now, Potiphar would be equivalent to a governor. Like, let's just say you went from here to Sacramento, but your destination was the White House. Almost the same 
thing, but at different levels. God is always going to put you in a place where he wants to know, can I trust you with the little before I let you get to the big? And so while he's there, he lands up having an incident, and yet what happens is, is that he gets promoted, or he lands up getting, in, in most eyes, demoted, and he gets sent to prison. And he goes from Potiphar's house to Pharaoh's palace. I want you to notice the thread. He went from Potiphar's house to Pharaoh's palace. He went from Potiphar's house to Pharaoh's palace. God has to trust you with the house before he can trust you with the palace. And so the Bible says this. So Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Potiphar only let him be in charge of a region. Pharaoh said, you're going to be in charge of a nation. And look what he says. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring from his finger and put it in Joseph's finger, and he dressed him in robes, fine linen, and put a gold chain around his neck. He became a rapper. And he had him ride in chariots and second in command, and the people shouted before him, make way, thus put him in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Notice what the favor of God does. The favor of God puts you before kings, and the favor of God enables you to take territory. So when you are walking in the favor of God, wherever your feet shall tread upon shall be yours. When you're walking in the favor of God, it's not that I just have favor with people, but I have favor to possess new territory. That God will make me in charge of what's in front of me. And, God, and the favor of God will always give you something you didn't have to work for. That's the favor of God. And so when God gave Joseph this favor, he never gave him ownership. He gave him stewardship. And the word stewardship means this. It means the position and duties of a steward, a person who acts as the surrogate of another or others. In other words, this isn't mine, but I'm going to treat it as if it is. One of, I'm putting together... Our staff retreat is next week, and one of the new core values that we're putting in our staff is, and they don't even know it, but they'll hear it tonight because they're going to get it next week, and you get to get it, is, is you're not an employee. You're an heir. It's different. An employee comes to work. An heir builds for legacy. So at the end of the day, imagine if you had employees or you were an employee that you actually felt like you owned what you work for. If you felt like you owned what you work for, how many know you treat it differently? And so the goal is, is that God is like, hey, I want you to steward over it. And he takes them from Pharaoh, I mean from Potiphar to the palace. But he had some stops. And in order for you to get from your dream to your destiny, you may not have to go to these places, but you'll experience these things. And that is, the first place he went to was the pit. And here's why he went to the pit. Not because God wanted him in a pit. It's who threw him in a pit. And who threw him in the pit was his brothers. And all God wanted to know from from. Joseph was, can you forgive those who threw you in a pit? The first test you will go before you ever get to your destiny is learning how to forgive. Most people have a dream that's still there, but they're still stuck in a pit because they haven't learned how to forgive those who threw them in there. When you're going to learn later on that it's never about the people who threw you in the pit. Because God will eventually bring them around your way again. 
And in that, he will prepare a table before you. Before the presence of your enemies. And you will eventually feed them. And so it's never about the people. It's about the condition of your heart. Because at the end of the day, getting to the top of the dream that God has for your life, you're going to go through stuff and people are going to scratch you. People are going to talk about you. People are going to stab on you. People are going to do all kinds of things. And you can't stop that. Because eventually they will come back around. And the same people that hurt you, God's going to use you to heal them. And that's why you got to get over it. Because it's never about you. It's like, it's, it's like, it's like I got to remind myself every day, you can't kill a dead man. And there's a reason why Paul crucified his flesh every day. I crucify my flesh every day. Because Paul understood that in order for me to succeed in the things that God wants me to succeed in, I'm, there's going to be some betrayals, there's going to be some hurts, there's going to be some backbiting. But how many know you can't kill a dead man? So if I just crucify my flesh every day, you can do whatever you want to do. But at the end of the day, it ain't going to hurt me. And so, and so God had to take him. Now, God had to teach him how to forgive. Because God will teach you how to forgive as you are on your way to your destiny. So then God said, oh, okay, well, you're, you're in the pit now. Now you're going to go to Potiphar's house. And when you go to Potiphar's house, you're going to be second in charge, and it's like the governor. But here's what's going to happen. I'm going to allow a situation to take place. God doesn't test you, but he allows tests. So he goes, okay, I'm, I'm, I, I got to know because I see who you are in public. You're the man. You're like, hey, guys, you guys are all that in a bag of chips. But you're great. You're fantastic. Okay, now I want to know who you are when you're by yourself. So God allows a situation to take place, and next thing you know, He's in the house all by himself with Potiphar's wife. She puts on Victoria's Secret, perfume, everything, okay? And she coming at him hard, like, oh, man, I want you. And no one's around, and nobody would have known. And yet Potiphar goes, I can't do this. Because the second test God's going to allow you to go through is your integrity and character test. Because, because here it is, your gift will get you there, but your character will keep you there. And at the end of the day, God just wants to know, is, are you going to have character where you're at now? Because if I give you more, you can do more. And if you can do more, it can harm you if you don't have the right character. Why do you think 98% of all lottery winners end up bankrupt? Because money is never the answer. At the end of the day, you can have so much, but if you have the wrong character, you're still going to end up broke. And so God has to allow you to go through it. And he's gonna, he wants to make sure you're that same person that loves him in church publicly as you are privately. And I believe at that moment, this is what I believe, I believe at that moment, Joseph, because if you put it in a humanistic pr perspective, it's hard to believe that Joseph would have just been like, nah, dude, it's all good. That Joseph would have been like, whoa, whoa, hey. But I think Joseph realized my future is greater than my moment. You want to know how to get over temptation? Your future is more greater than your moment. And, 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 he, and so God said, okay, you passed the integrity test. I, now I know I can trust you when you're all alone. You can forgive. You can, you can be trusted. And then... He lands up doing the right thing, but gets the punishment of somebody who did the wrong thing. So how do you deal in life when you're doing the right thing, but it seems like you're being punished as if you did the wrong thing? Because his wife's like, rape! And he gets thrown into prison. He goes from second in charge to thrown into prison. He did the right thing, 
but he got the wrong punishment. And that will mess with you because at the end of the day, most of us, including me, I would sit there and say, well, hey, if you're going to punish me because I did the wrong thing, I might as well just do the wrong thing. But he was like, wait a minute, wait, wait. I'm going to go to the prison. So he goes to the prison knowing I did everything right, but I ended up in a place where most people end up by doing something wrong. Why am I even here? It just keeps on happening, one problem after the other. And he ends up in prison. And when he ends up in prison, there's a baker and a butler inside there, and they have a dream. And Joseph says, I can interpret it, and he interprets their dreams. And I want you to notice that he interprets their dreams. And when he interprets their dreams, all he asks them is one thing. Just remember me when you get out of here. And guess what they landed up doing? Not remembering. What was that whole test about? It's very simple. Here's what God wanted to know about Joseph while he was in prison. Are you willing to help others when you're in need of help? Because here's what happens when we're in need. We don't want to help nobody. Isn't it amazing that God always brings you opportunity to help somebody when you yourself are in need? And you're just like, why are you coming to me? Like, I'm, I'm the one that needs help. It's a test. Are you willing to help someone even when you are in need? And you know what God's trying to let you know in times like that? Because Joseph could have been like, hey, bro, I, I get it. You're, I don't know why you're in prison, the baker and the butler. I, I don't know why. But I shouldn't be here because I was falsely accused. And so at the end of the day, I, I know, I, you know, I, I, I could see you had a dream. The whole time he had the gift of interpretation. He could have sat there and said, well, I'm going to hold on to this. I'm not going to really do it because I'm not going to really help because, all honesty, I'm the person that needs help. And I sat there and I thought, how many people are holding on to their gifts today because you're in a position of need? And God's bringing people your way to remind you that the gift that's inside of you is not based on the condition of what you're in. The gift that's inside of you is a gift and it's made perfect, so use it. And stop using the excuse, well, I just got all this going on in my life and all this stuff. And my house is it, and my family's like that, and my marriage is like that, and my body's like that. And, and God's saying, hey, I'll take care of all that. But just use your gift, and your gift will make room for you, the Bible says. And we keep on using all these excuses, and then, we've, and then we can't figure out, God, why do you send all these needy people my way? Why is it that, God, I'm like attracted to people that got issues when I'm the one crying myself to sleep at night, crying myself to work, and I'm jacked up and I'm a mess, and God's trying to send you a message. Hello? You got something inside of you, sir. You got something inside of you, man, that you got to release. And then let me take care of your issues, and you take care of theirs. And so we use these excuses like, I, I just, I, I can't help nobody because I'm the one that needs help. And, oh, woe is me. And, you know, poor me and poor little. No, no, at the end of the day, why are they coming to you? The favor of God is still on your life. It's why they're coming to you. They're not coming to you because they're your friends. They're coming to you because they see something on you that their own friends don't even have. It's the favor of God. And you can't see it because you're blinded by the peripheral of everything that's going on around you. And you're sitting there saying, God, 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 I need you. God, I don't know why this is happening. And he's rem he, he'll, he, he, he remembers the times in which you said, Lord, please just one day use me. And God uses the most unusual moments to bring a need to your life when you yourself are in need. And all God wants to know is, are you going to pass the prison test? Are you going to help somebody when you yourself are in need? And some of you right now don't even know you're still stuck in prison. 
is because at the end of the day, he keeps on bringing needs to you and you don't know how to handle it. Because at the end of the day, all you can see are your own needs. God takes care of your needs while you take care of others. When I was driving to the desert 14 years ago in a U-Haul, and Lisette was back in L.A., and we came here, and you know the story. I, I, I heard the Lord's voice say to me, if you take care of my people, I'll always take care of your family. And I have kids, I have a wife, I have brothers, sisters, dad, everything. But I tell you this, I live by that every day. Obed, if you'll take care of them. Listen, I can't tell you how many times I've gone on this stage broken. I can't even tell you the last few weeks of what I've gone through. Carrying the weight of this whole thing that's happening to destiny as far as this building and blah, 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 blah. And I wake up. And some of you know what I'm talking about because you experience this. You wake up and it's almost, you're almost in a panic attack. You can't breathe. Two nights ago, my wife looked at me, man, I couldn't even sleep, and she goes, are you okay? I said, I'm, I think I am. I think I am. I don't know. And I had to get scriptures. And it's easy to be, you know, oh, well, praise the Lord, God, you know, God, you're going to do this, you're going to do this. But you're still human. And you still carry the weight and I know the devil's throwing everything Oh, bid, you know, because he's going to see the thousands of people he does not want to let go of. And right now, I'm fighting. I'm waking up in the morning, man, and I'm getting my cup of coffee, and I have to put worship music on just to motivate me. Because at the end of the day, I'm, I'm tired. I'm going, oh, God, no, man, Lord, what's going to happen? And my phone rings, and I'm like, is it going to be something negative? Oh, my God, is it, what, what's going to happen? And what's the banks going to say now? And what do they want now? And that, 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 that. And, you know, you just want to get so carnal. And then they expect you to be like, praise the Lord, everybody. God bless you, man of God. You're so awesome. And you just want to just like. Like, you messing with the wrong person, because I'm still, I'm still human. Well, you know, ding, 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 ding. And, 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 and at the end of the day, you know, you're, 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 you're ministering to people, and you're just in this massive place of need. But you can't have the excuse of going, well, I just can't help you today, man, because I'm so jacked up myself. <laughs> no, I, I got to trust that if, that, that, that if the need comes my way, there's a gift in me to bring the solution to that, or it would not have come my way in the first place. Therefore, let God take care of everything around me. And so, and so you're just like, Lord, I give you that. Lord, I give you this. Lord, I give Matter of fact, I just give you everything. But, but, but you're going to face that. And you're going to face that, those times in which you feel like you're incarcerated by your own ambition. And you're just like, I'm going forward, man. I'm, I'm, like, I'm like, we're going after this. And you, some of you are like, we're going to start another, we're going to open up another business. Or, or man, you know what, I'm going to take this other step of faith. And, and, and all of a sudden, listen, as you're on this road and you're sitting there and you're like, man, you're, 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 you, you, let me tell you what happened. Let me tell you what I'm learning in this season of my life. That there's been moments in my life in this season, I'm being real as can be. There's been moments in my life this season that I felt like I was being penalized for my ambition because it's easy it let me tell you it's so easy to come here every Wednesday and preach it's so easy to come here three times a, a, a Sunday and preach but because I see souls and because I want people to grow and because I want to see this valley saved and I want to see revival hit this place and we're taking a step of faith and we're like we're gonna do this man. we're gonna do this we're gonna do this and sometimes I feel like I'm being penalized for my own ambition. 
And so you go to God and you're like, God, there's nothing inside of me. There's no motive. There's just, it's all of you. And let me tell you something. Ambitious people know what I'm talking about. Visionary people know what I'm talking about. When you're taking these steps of faith and nobody sees the pain. And then you're just going, you're going, you know what? It's easy just to stay small. It's easy to stay small. Because when that amb- when you start seeing we could take this territory and we could take this territory and we could take this territory and we're going to buy that company and we're going to do this and, and we're going to start this and we're going to, and let me tell you something, and you start walking down that path, let me tell you what starts happening to you. You get voices you've never heard speak to your life. You start dealing, let me tell you something, you can have everything and still be depressed. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, you can go eat at any restaurant in the valley you want, and you could still be depressed. Because it will knock you over, man. When you're carrying the responsibility of so many people, and you got to go, Lord, I'm going to pass this prison test. I'm going to pass this prison test. And, and, and you know what I've been, you know what I've, I've been in the spirit, and I have been, this is what keeps on coming. The future is greater than the moment. The future is greater. When I feel at times things are knocking on my mind, I'm going, the future is greater than the moment. I can't tell how many times I walked around my house going, oh, bear, the future is greater than the moment. The future is greater than the moment. And then I jump in bed, get a little depressed for about 10 minutes, and then I jump back out. The future is greater than the moment. The future is greater than the moment. And I, I'm just telling you. When we open up that building and you see me sob and boo-hoo and I may lose it, I just want you to know where it's coming from. Because it's coming from all the hell and all the demonic attack that's coming and coming and coming and coming and coming. But no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper and the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. For I feel that, my God. And you got to remind yourself at times you got to dig deep down inside and say, I'm immovable and I'm unshakable. i got to tell you that I'm on my way. If God promised it, he is faithful to complete it to the end. you got it like this, like that. And it's that prison test. It's that prison test. And it's when God, you can be seated, it's like, God, I, I, you're gonna, I, I know I need to help people, but I need help too. And let me, tell, let, me tell you, let, me, let, me, let me tell you the danger of it, too. And I'm going to speak to leaders, because all you guys are leaders. It's in those moments. I'll give you an example. A few days ago, I was driving. I was feeling something like this, just beating against my heart. And I picked up the phone, and I called somebody. Voicemail. Then I said, this person's always up this early in the morning, and I'm going to call them. Voicemail. The third person goes, ah, this dude always answers my phone calls. Voicemail. No one's around. It's almost as if God wants you to be alone. Obed, why do you want to talk to them? Talk to me. Lord, I, 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 I just talked to you for 45 minutes. What do you want to talk again for? Talk to me. No, because you prayed for 45 minutes. Talk to me. Tell me what you're really feeling. Because you can come into my presence and you can tell me how good I am and you're a good, good father. It's who you are and, you know, you know, you know all this kind of stuff. But no, Obed, talk to me. Yeah. Wow. Tell me what you're really feeling right now. Because you were just about to, three times, you was going to tell your friends what you're feeling. Wow. <laughs> and here's, here, here, here's what I learned a couple of days ago. It's what I learned. It's what I learned. I can pray to God and still not tell him everything. It's a prison test. 
And then you get to Pharaoh's palace. And when you get to Pharaoh's palace, here's what happens. Here's what happens when you finally get to the top, okay? Because here's what's going to happen. You're going to have to learn how to part, pardon those who hurt you. You willing to pardon those who hurt you? In other words, you release them. Hey, I release you. Because at the end of the day, you thought it was for evil, but God turned it around for the good. Yeah. Now watch me for a second. Give me a few minutes. Watch this. Listen to me. I want you to see something I never saw. That's why I love fasting and praying. The grandfather of Joseph was Isaac. And God spoke to Isaac one day, and here's what he said to Isaac. He said this. Listen to me. He says, the Lord appeared to Isaac and said, do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Now, now imagine if you're Joseph. And God gives you a dream that you're going to be second in charge in Egypt. And all of a sudden, for 13 years, it's all bad. At least you think it is. Man, I got sold out by my brothers. Man, I got falsely accused. And now I'm in prison. You don't think that Joseph was probably thinking, am I on the right path? Am I really going in the right direction? And then I could imagine Joseph going, Oh my God, I'm going to the actual land that God forbidded my grandfather to go to. How easy could it be for him to question where he's going to a place to get something and to achieve something his family has never had? Have you ever felt like this? Have you ever felt like my life is moving in the wrong direction? <laughs> but can I go deeper? Have you ever felt like your life was moving in the right, wrong direction, but you were actually on the right path? Listen to me. Moving in the wrong direction does not mean you're, on the, you're not on the right path. Moving in the wrong direction is a feeling. The right path are your steps. And if God has ordained your steps, those who are sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. If, you, if your steps are ordained of God, there's going to be times like when the path, you're on the right path, but it feels like you're moving in the wrong direction. And that's what Joseph was feeling. And here's what you have to understand. There's a difference between providence versus circumstance. The providential plan of God was that I have a destination for you. The circumstance was everything that was happening. And here's what we land up doing. We land up getting frustrated because of the circumstances. And we forget about his providence. Your circumstances cannot disqualify you from what God has promised. Because the only time you're going to quit and the only person that's going to cause you to quit is yourself. And so, and so, and so, so Joseph didn't pay attention to his circumstances. But he took advantage of the fact of why he was there because the Lord was with him. And so watch, here's what happens. Look, look what happens. Genesis 45. Watch this. He's telling his brothers, don't be upset. Don't be angry with yourselves for selling me to this place. It was good. It was God who sent me here ahead of you to preserve your lives. This famine that has ravaged the land for two years will last five more years and there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. God has sent me ahead of you to keep you and your families alive and to preserve many survivors. How was he able to give back to the same people that threw him in the pit? Because what you don't realize, even the people that have hurt you are working out the plan of God for you. All of the people who betrayed you, all of the people who have talked to, all of those things, God has used that and will use it. And at the end of the day, they will come back and you will be the one that would feed them. So why is it, would you think it's worth it to hold on to the hurt 
when the hurt is part of the plan. Come on, am I talking? And the favor of God flows. And now I'm going to give you a favor flow that's going to change your life. And then we'll close. For Joseph, it took faith. He had to keep on going, even when the circumstances look different than his destiny. But at every stop, God wanted to find out his priorities. So when he was thrown into the pit, is your priority, are you willing to forgive your brothers? Yes, Lord. Okay, I'm going to send you to Potiphar's house. Okay. Here comes cutie pie and a Victoria's Secret. No one's around. I want to know, are you going to sleep with her? Or are you going to make me number one in your life? I just want to make sure your priorities are right. And he passes the test. He goes into the, goes into the prison. The baker and the butler, he interprets her dreams. They forget about him. The Bible never mentions that he gets upset. I just want to let you know, even if people forget about you, even all the people who helped you that never sent you a thank you card, will you still keep me number one and still keep on doing that? I just want to make sure your priorities are right. So God took him from faith to priorities to provision. All faith does, it leads you to places where God's going to check your priorities. And if you have your priorities right, you'll move into provision. Oftentimes, listen to me as I close, oftentimes you're not in provision because of lack of faith. You're not in provision for lack of priorities. I'll show you another story. Abraham, Genesis 22. Take your son, your only son, whom you love. Sacrifice him. Lord, he's my only son. No, you have Ishmael, but yeah, Lord, he's my only son. And he goes, no, go sacrifice him. So faith was Abraham climbing the mountain. Priorities was laying his son at the altar and about to kill him. Because God, I'm going to put you number one. And God stops him. And as soon as the angel of the Lord stopped his hand, a ram came out from the thicket. Provision came. Faith, priorities, provision. You want to know when you land up losing provision is when your priorities get wrong. You may not lose your faith, but you lose your provision because of lack of priorities. Friends, Here's the goal, to walk in the favor of God. The most effective position for you to be as a leader is in a position before God, not a powerful position before man. That, that's, that, that sums it all up. It don't matter how successful you get, doesn't matter how much favor you walk in, God has put a coat on you that nobody can strip from you. God has placed a favor on your life that nobody can take it away from you. No circumstance, no demon, no devil can strip you from the position that God has given you because he's given you an unmerited favor, an incredible grace that's on your life, and nobody can take that away from you. Not a circumstance, not a condition, not a problem, not people. Nobody can take that from you because you're walking in the favor of God. So don't be shocked when you come into the offices of governors and kings. It's not your ability that got you there. It was favor that got you there. Don't be shocked when you walk into your manager's office and they give you a promotion. They say, man, we just see something different about you. It's not your ability. It's the favor on your life. And so every time, every time you're driving up to a client's place, Every time you're trying to go business, Father, I send favor in there. I thank you that the favor of God is on my life. They're going to love me. They're going to appreciate me. They're going to give me what I'm asking for in Jesus' name. And can I tell you something? Say, Pastor Obed. Come on, you can stand if you Pastor Obed. Wait, let me tell you something. Luke 2.52. And Jesus grew in wisdom, in favor, and in character with God Vertical and man, horizontal. 
It's impossible to have favor with God and not have favor with man. Every morning I wake up, and as I pray, I stretch my hands. And I say, Lord, I thank you that the favor of God is going before me. I thank you that there's favor on the people of destiny. That today, increase is coming their way. Thank you, Lord, that you're opening up doors that man try to shut. Thank you, Father, that you're giving them opportunities and you're placing them before decision makers and you're placing them before kings. I thank you, Lord, that they will be recognized because the favor that's on their life. And friends, when you walk around with this confidence of knowing that the favor of God is on your life, you just got to realize that you're going to go through a couple of tests, but it's not God testing you. It's allowing him, it's allowing you to be tested. Because you'll never be trusted until you're tested. God wants to trust you. But he has to see that you are ready for it. So God has something big for you in 2019. You have faith. Line up your priorities. And then provision will come. Walk in favor. Every day, Lord, favor over our company. Favor over our employees. Favor over my business. You work for a company. You walk in there and they will prosper because you're there. Because the favor of God that's on you. And the Bible says, I read it to you. And the Bible says, and Pharaoh's palace grew. And it increased because Joseph was there. The privilege that your company has is you're there because the favor that's on your life. Come on, stretch your hands towards heaven. Father, I pray for favor as I do every morning over these people. Those watching online, I thank you for the favor of God. The favor of God, may it overshadow everybody in this place. God, we mean, we, may we never be afraid of a test. May we always know that while Joseph was in the pit, the Lord was with him. When Joseph was at Potiphar's palace, the Lord was with him. When Joseph was in the prison, the Lord was with him. Lord, the favor that's on our life is never based on the condition of where we're presently at. It's based on the fact that we are your children. And that will never change. So, Lord, wherever anyone's at in their marriage, in their families, with their children, Lord, wherever they're at, the Lord is with you. The favor of God is on you. And you will make it. And you will get there. And when you do, you will be a blessing to the same people that hurt you before you even started the journey. And you will bless those who came against you. Lord, we release anybody. Lord, that has hurt us, we release them right now. God, we release unforgiveness. Lord, we let go right now of any anger and pain. It's not worth it. Lord, my, my future is greater than my moment. My future is greater than my moment. God, those who've talked, those who've backstabbed, those who've said things that are not true, Father, I release that right now. In Jesus' name. Lord, I want the favor of God more than anything. I'm not going to hold on to people's faults because then I can't walk in your favor. And so, Lord, I release people's faults so I can walk in your favor. I exchange those faults for your favor. I want the favor of God on my life. I want the favor of God over my children. I want the favor of God over my family. I want the favor of God over my finances. I want the favor of God over my future. I want the favor of God over my steps. Every single day, we walk with the vision of Nehemiah and the favor of Joseph right now. In the name of Jesus. Now, Father, I thank you for an anointing of favor. I thank you, Lord, for an anointing of favor over every, over every other person right now. That every yoke is broken. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed right now. In Jesus' name. Let the anointing flow of favor right now. Of favor right now. We, we let go of every weight that so easily besets us. We cast our cares on you. God, we don't carry burdens. We carry vision right now, God. In Jesus' name, bless our companies, bless, our, bless the place I work, God. Bless, Lord. If I'm unemployed, I thank you that you're going to open up the right door. 
Favor right now. Favor right now. Favor right now. Favor right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, say, dear Lord, forgive me of anything I've been holding on to. I release the faults of others, the accusations of others. That is not me, and it will never be me. I am favored. I am highly favored. I am your child. That's what I'm defined as. I'm not defined by what others say about me. I'm defined by what you say about me. And you tell me that I'm the apple of your eyes, that I'm the head and not the tail. I'm blessed going in and I'm blessed coming out. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. And the favor of God is on my life in Jesus' name. And all God's people say amen and amen and amen.